In part five, I said that in this episode, you would gain a better understanding of how Jordan Peterson's Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life, really is about the Holocaust by examining this picture, which precedes rule three. As promised, I'm going to explain how it's a metaphor for genocide, but before I do that, I have a few loose ends to tie up, after which I'll return to Peterson's orderly and heroic knight who slays the dragon of chaos and unpack what the symbol means. As we've learned, this image for Rule 1 of Beyond Order, along with its description, is plagiarized from Aleister Crowley. And parts of this image that precede Rule 2, along with its description, are also plagiarized from Aleister Crowley. But when it comes to plagiarism, Jordan Peterson is no one-trick lobster. No, sir. He likes to balance his Crowley-esque occultism with crypto-fascism. For example, Rule 1 is do not carelessly denigrate social institutions or creative achievement. Peterson argues that the combination of creative achievement and social institutions form the bedrock of Western civilization, and that this is something we must preserve. This entire structure of culture, he writes, down to its foundations and in each of its building blocks, is the result of creative talent, the achievement of intelligence, and the industriousness of industrious individuals. What gigantic social institutions we have created, he boasts, adding, the ungrateful individual has been contributing not only to expose that social institution to ridicule, but also to contaminate it. This is bad, Peterson tells us. We should not carelessly ridicule social institutions. Only, Peterson never really wrote that. Hitler did, although I added the phrase, the ungrateful individual. Let's examine the original text and then compare it to writing that really is from Peterson. Hitler, this entire structure of culture, down to its foundations, and in each of its building blocks, is the result of creative talent, the achievement of intelligence, and the industriousness of industrious individuals. What gigantic social institutions we have created. The Jew has been contributing not only to expose that social institution to ridicule, but also to contaminate it. Peterson, the structure of culture, the foundation of the Western social and psychological structure, there is a particular manner of organizing society that will provide a final solution, a final static solution to all our problems. Just reorganize the essential building blocks of society. Predictors of long-term success in Western countries include industriousness and orderliness. Do not carelessly denigrate social institutions. So Hitler talks about this entire structure of culture, and Peterson the structure of culture. Hitler speaks of the building blocks of culture, and Peterson, the building blocks of society. Hitler frowns on the Jews, exposing that social institution to ridicule. And Peterson says, do not carelessly denigrate social institutions. Plus, Peterson says, all our problems can be solved by a final solution. But of course, he couldn't have been referring to the final solution. Any suggestion he was would be taking his language out of context the stock phrase Peterson's cult followers reach for whenever anyone dares criticize their guru for saying something malicious. Allow me to provide some context. Peterson made his final solution statement during one of his Maps of Meaning lectures at Harvard in 1996. During the first lecture, he told his students that the course was predicated on understanding why ordinary people would participate in an event like the final solution. And then, in a subsequent lecture, he said... There is a particular manner of organizing society that will provide a final solution, a final static solution to all our problems. Just reorganize the essential building blocks of society, and you'll inevitably produce a future that everyone will find ideal, and that will be the final solution, so to speak. Peterson made this statement without any explicit mention of 20th century history. He was implying that searching for a final solution was just what societies did. He never specified the nature of the final solution or the problems, nor did he explain how all our problems, plural, could disappear with the final solution, singular. And that's because he was brazenly practicing crypto-fascism at Harvard. Peterson said the final solution would produce a future that everyone will find ideal. And Hitler told the Germans, we promise you that we will hold up high our old ideals in the future. Moreover, Peterson said the final solution could be achieved if we just reorganize the essential building blocks of society, 
and Hitler spoke of the building blocks for the new German Reich, a line Peterson plagiarized when writing about the brain. Hitler, the building blocks for the new German Reich. Peterson, the building blocks for new structures in the brain. Circling back to reorganizing the essential building blocks, of key importance is the word reorganize. We need to reorganize the building blocks of society. Of course, by building blocks, Peterson means people. If we reorganize the people, we can achieve the final solution. Peterson tends to use the word organize when talking about Nazism. For example, when he said, Hitler built the biggest parade grounds in human history to host the Nuremberg rallies, and he would get in front of them on this huge stage with Greek columns, very impressive looking, and have blocks of thousands of people organized perfectly orderly. Did you catch it? Peterson says to provide a final solution, a final static solution to all our problems, just reorganize the essential building blocks of society, and Hitler would have blocks of thousands of people organized perfectly, orderly. Here's another example of Peterson raving about a Nuremberg rally. That's tens of thousands of people all organized into basically perfect squares. Yes, squares, or blocks, what Hitler dubbed the building blocks for the new German Reich, or what Peterson called the essential building blocks of society, while suggesting that achieving the final solution was desirable. Peterson also associated Nazism with organizing when he said, One of the things I've always thought about Hitler is that, you know people, you have to admire Hitler. That's the thing, because he was an organizational genius. When Peterson was asked by podcast host Ethan Klein about how the Holocaust was implemented in terms of logistics, he replied, Well, I mean, the Germans were an organized, are an organized, were an organized people. When the biologist Brett Weinstein said to Peterson that Hitler's race theory was half-baked, Peterson had a conniption, scolding that there were many things you could not say about the Fuhrer. For example, you can't say that Hitler was a poor organizer. In the same talk, Peterson told Weinstein that he had gifted his father this imitation Nazi Warrenson, which is a neo-Nazi symbol that has appeared at so-called free speech rallies. You see, Peterson and other neo-Nazis need free speech in order to incite violence against non-whites, but liberals are against such free speech. That's why they're communists who perpetuate cancel culture. The banner Jordan Peterson gave to Walter Peterson was present at the 2021 storming of the U.S. Capitol. Authorities have admitted that the fascist mob that hoped to dismantle American democracy was quite organized. Jordan Peterson also said to Brett Weinstein, I've been identified, under many circumstances now, with the alt-right. I've been doing every bit of investigation I can into its many manifestations. It's a very confusing place. It's certainly not an organized place. He said this before the storming of the U.S. Capitol. Trump did what Peterson has been longing to do, only his fans are so dense, they can't decipher his messages. When he said he had been identified as alt-right, this was a signal to the alt-right. When he said he'd been doing every bit of investigation I can into the alt-right, this was another signal to the alt-right. Also, observe how he didn't condemn the alt-right. Later in the interview, he suggested that Trump's neo-Nazis are very fine people comment after the Charlottesville Unite the Right rally was not exactly wrong, but ill-timed. Trump should have denounced neo-Nazism immediately and then waited a couple of weeks to emphasize that violence was also coming from the far left. Put another way, Peterson was revealing how he would have signaled to neo-Nazis that his condemnation had been perfunctory and that all was good. Anyhow, for the alt-right to be organized, it would need an organizational genius, say, a Canadian psychologist who falsely claims to have an IQ in excess of 150, and who commands his legion of devotees to get organized and be like Horace, so they can pay attention and reorganize the state. He means reorganize the Reich. Hitler spoke of the reorganization of European states, but once more, many of his followers do not understand. They're supposed to be the building blocks, but they're mostly just blockheads. Therefore, reorganizing the state to achieve another final solution is going to be problematic. But the organizational genius soldiers on. The psychotic delusions bound up with schizophrenia can seem so real that no amount of reasoning during non-psychotic phases can shake those delusions. 
That is, Peterson believes a new final solution, or at least a race war, can be achieved. But such a depressing topic. Let's turn our attention to this painting called Water Lilies. Take a moment to inspect it. Do you see how it's propaganda for Lebensraum and the final solution? It helps to know that it was painted by the Nazi artist Ludwig Detman and was official Nazi art. Detman was included on the God-gifted list of artists deemed vital to Nazi culture. This list was compiled by Adolf Hitler and Joseph Goebbels. Another artist on this list was Arno Brecker, seen in this photo on the right next to Hitler. Brecker created the statue for Hitler called Readiness, a sinewy nude warrior withdrawing his sword from its scabbard. Unveiled in 1939, it was meant to epitomize German indomitability and Aryan perfection. Arno Brecker's readiness was modeled on Michelangelo's David. Hitler was obsessed with Greco-Roman statues, especially ones of nude men, and was purportedly a fan of David. After relations with Mussolini soured, he supposedly wanted David for his collection. Why am I telling you this? Because the image that precedes Rule 3 in 12 Rules for Life is of Jordan Peterson's son, Julian, gazing up at Michelangelo's David. Fun fact, Hitler's favorite Roman emperor was Julian, because he was a Judeophobe. He says so at Hitler's Table Talk, a book Peterson recommends to his followers, says he has read multiple times, and describes as amazing. But I'm not suggesting that Peterson named his son after one of Hitler's heroes. Well, actually, I am. But getting back to water lilies, and how it probably represents an endorsement for Lebensraum and the final solution, you will note that it has a sort of Garden of Eden feel about it. Drawing on Romanticism, it represents an Aryan paradise, which was almost certainly meant as a counter to what Hitler derided as the Jew's paradise, where the international Jew has destroyed man and property. In 1922, Hitler said, We National Socialists realized that the state can be for our people a paradise only if the people can hold sway therein freely as a paradise. We realized that a slave state will never be a paradise, but only a hell. In other words, don't support the communists, who will only enslave you. Support us, and we'll maintain your freedom. When Hitler wanted to commence the final solution, he ordered his free underlings to turn Germany into a Garden of Eden. Peterson knows this because it's mentioned in Christopher Browning's Ordinary Men, a book about a Nazi murder squad that Peterson recommends to his ordinary lobsters and prescribes to psychologically disturbed clients. While discussing Ordinary Men, Peterson said, Hitler didn't give out directives precisely, he hinted at what he might want, and then his minions would get together and lay out policies in accordance with what they thought were his wishes. Yes, Hitler hinted. Like how Peterson hints. Twelve Rules features a section called The Garden of Eden, and Peterson says the book is primarily about the Holocaust. Hint, hint. Like how Hitler promoted an Aryan or Nazi paradise to counter the Jewish or communist paradise, Peterson does something similar. To cite an example, he disparages the arrogant intellectuals who are drawn to the promised utopia of communism, and then instructs his followers to aim for paradise. Remember Peterson quoting Jung to say, No tree, it is said, can grow to heaven, unless its roots reach down to hell. When Peterson says, aim for paradise, he means aim for hell, or create hell on earth. He also talks about the establishment of the kingdom of God on earth, the resurrection of paradise. Since he has repeatedly called Hitler God, the kingdom of God must mean the kingdom of Hitler, or the Reich, and the resurrection of paradise can be achieved if we just organize the essential building blocks of society, because that will provide a final solution to all our problems. Twelve Rules includes a recreation of this painting in order to give readers an idea of what to aim at or what type of paradise they should resurrect. You can see that it's a bit like water lilies, with people who are preternaturally white lounging about on the grass. Peterson writes about the painting, but fails to mention its name or country of origin. It's called Paradies Gartline, and it's German. Its English name is Garden of Eden. Peterson also leaves out who's in this German Garden of Eden. For example, the man behind the tree. That's St. George, and at his feet lies a dead dragon. The dragon was one of Hitler's many epithets for the Bolsheviks or Jews, who he also called serpents and chaos. In Mein Kampf, 
He says that due to the Treaty of Versailles, the Allies threw a sword into the scales of Germany. Therefore, what Germany needed to do was throw an equally strong sword into the scales of the Allies. This, he said, would achieve balance. It was a call to rearm and take revenge for the Jewish stab in the back, the insidious lie that explained away Germany's military defeat. This picture of St. George slaying the dragon was created in 1937 and made official Nazi art. It's called St. George with the swastika. Again, here's the image that precedes Rule 3 in Beyond Order. St. George represents the Aryan, and the dragon is a stand-in for the Jew. And here's St. George in Maps of Meaning. The caption reads, Castle, Hero, Serpent, and Virgin. The castle is the Reich. It provides the walls that protect the garden. The castle represents order, and outside of order there lurks chaos. The hero is the Aryan Superman, who has replaced God. He's godlike in that he gets to decide who lives and who dies. The serpent is the non-white interloper, who must be dispatched with the sword. And the virgin is probably a reference to a part in Mein Kampf about a naive girl who needs to be protected. Hitler, the black-haired Jewish youth, lies in wait for hours on end, satanically glaring and spying on the unsuspicious girl who he plans to seduce, adulterating her blood and removing her from her own people. Peterson likes this piece of crypto-fascist art so much that before he became famous, he did interviews with it in plain sight while in his home, upstairs. However, after he became famous, by falsely claiming that Canada had compelled speech laws, the artwork was positioned under the staircase, downstairs. Hitler also liked to invoke medieval imagery. For example, he talked about the German knight who fought off the hordes of the East to protect the German lands. A Nazi parade in Munich in 1939 featured men dressed as Teutonic knights. This one looks a little like St. George. The Nazi propaganda machine even depicted Hitler as a knight, as can be seen in this portrait called the Standard Bearer. In describing this image, Peterson has said, So there's Hitler as, you know, Knight of the Faith. But that's Hitler as Knight, of the blood, roughly speaking. Hitler's the Knight. He's the Knight of Nationalism. Well, that's God the Father too, you know. Hitler's a Knight. He's a white Knight, in fact. He's assimilated to the idea of medieval nobility, you know. In its purest form. He's the Knight of the people. There's a Wagnerian element to that, and he was a great admirer of Wagner. Wagnerian music, by the way. And Hitler wanted to put music halls in every, classical music halls, in every city in Europe. Hitler also wanted to round up the Jews in every city in Europe and imprison or murder them, but Peterson failed to mention this. Peterson has shown the standard bearer in a TEDx talk, saying, We want tyranny because we despise what we don't know. He meant who we don't know or don't understand, like non-white immigrants. We is an exclusionary pronoun indicating white people. In the same talk, Peterson warned of chaos, saying, It's the snake that eternally lurks in the garden. Hitler wrote about the lurking Jew. Here's the snake that Peterson has in mind. The Jewish snake, or the Bolshevik snake, as can be seen in this propaganda poster, which says, Down with Bolshevism. When Peterson said that Canada's non-existent compelled speech laws were the product of a communist plot, and the Marxist element, he meant the Jews. Back to the TEDx talk, observe how the picture at the top is a snake, but the one at the bottom is a dragon. These images are, in part, allusions to Norse mythology and the Midgard serpent, enemy of Thor. The Nazis were influenced by Norse mythology, and Hitler's mentor, Dietrich Eckhart, penned an article called The Midgard Serpent, a reference to the Jews. Eckhart wrote, it is by the German nature, the capability of self-sacrifice itself, that the world will heal and find its way back to the divine, but only after a bloody war of annihilation against the united army of trolls. In other words, against the Midgard serpent encircling the earth, the reptilian incarnation of the lie. Eckhart also wrote, Germany awake, the serpent, the dragon from hell is broken loose. Stupidities and lies have burst his chains asunder. Red as with blood are the heavens and flames. Ring out for the assault, now or never. Germany awake! The slogan, Germany awake, appeared on this propaganda poster. 
so did Eckhart's and Hitler's Red Dragon, as seen in this image. And in this one. Observe what's around the dragon's neck, the communist red star, and the Star of David. And what's on the wall behind Peterson's statuette of St. George? Communist propaganda. Peterson surrounds himself with communist art, designed to conceal or facilitate oppression and mass murder, and Nazi art, meant to facilitate oppression and mass murder. When he instructs his followers to heroically confront chaos and slay the dragon, this has multiple meanings, but one is, murder the other. Another homicidal code is, calling forth meaning, which is what he's encouraging his audience to do here, in the TEDx talk. The Maps of Meaning logo represents the Reich, which is currently fragmented, but can be reunited. Its main colors are black, red, and gold, those of the German flag. And in the center, we can see a bent or warped swastika, moving in the wrong direction. Fortunately, we can straighten it out and reverse that direction if we call forth meaning. As Peterson is explaining in this image, it is in this manner that paradise is regained. Recall him saying, there is a particular manner of organizing society that will provide a final solution. The final solution is paradise. It's Hitler's Garden of Eden. Paradise must be regained because paradise was lost when the Allies liberated the camps. The knight in this picture from Beyond Order does not signify Peterson, but rather Hitler, a mass murderer. Peterson's lackeys are supposed to emulate the knight and slay the dragon. They should throw the sword into the scales of the enemy to restore balance, because as it is, they're mentally unbalanced, just like their guru, who is absolutely crackerjacks, a lunatic signaling to other lunatics. That concludes the end of part six. Be sure to check out part seven.